thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that thou art, thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence, my life. Thou my wisdom and Thou my true word I ever with Thee and Thou with me, Lord Thou my great Father and I Thy true Son Thou in me dwelling and I I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and thou only, the first in my heart. High King of heaven, my treasure thou
Good morning. Good morning, lovely people of Kirstairs, Kirstairs Junction and Kanwad. I welcome you for this service on uh, August the 15th, 12th Sunday after Pentecost. And guess what, where we are today? We are at the outer area of Claghorn, Kirstairs and Kanwad as at my left hand side and that's the road up there which goes to Forth and the owner of this farm kindly allowed us to film here. We have cows, we have donkeys and we have ponies all up here. It's a beautiful day. It was raining all the time but God has blessed us with the dry weather. Well again we are here to worship our God. The theme is still continuing for last three lectionaries, for last three Sundays, when Jesus feed um, 5,000 and more with just two fish and five loaves. He gave them what was required for their physical body. But the last time, last Sunday, we discussed how Jesus is giving them spiritual food. And in today's lectionary, which is again from John's Gospel, Jesus is talking about that unless you eat my flesh, you have no uh, connection with me. You cannot reach to heaven. You have no communion with me. And then again, the objection. Objection of Jews, they said, ah, we know this man. We know their father. We know his mother. How can this man give his flesh for us to eat? Let's worship our God and see how can we partake in His body and in His blood and choose, de uh, choose life over death. And that's a very important question today. How can we choose life over death? Are we wise enough to do so? Let's worship our God. And I'm reading from Psalm 111. Come and praise God in the company of the God's people. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Great are the works of God, full of glory and majesty. Our God is gracious and compassionate. Our God is merciful and forgiving. Our God is faithful and trustworthy. Our God is just and good. So come, so come, let's worship God together. God's praise will last forever. Amen. God's praise will last forever. Amen. Let's sing our first hymn, Fill Thou My Life. It's a new Scottish hymn, and I found it in a new Scottish hymn website. Fill Thou My Life. Let's sing this hymn and worship our God in truth and in spirit. Thank you. Fill 
fear, each stress and care Be told into a song And every winding of the way The echo shall prolong So shall no part of day or night From sacredness be free But all my life in every spell Be fellowship with me Let's unite our hearts in prayer. Lord, we are gathered here through these screens as your children, forgiven and accepted, meeting in this sacred place. Because we know wherever we worship you, you make that place sacred, whether it is our church building or our house or a barn, or our car. Lord, we gather as brother and sister, family together, meeting at your place. Lord, we gather as your body, blessing each other in your presence, the community of Christ. For the majesty of creation, the heavens above and the ocean below, accept our offering of praise. For the beauty of your love, the wisdom, the joy, and patience shown us, accept our offering of praise. For the sadness we cause you, and your willingness to forgive us, accept our offering of praise. For the knowledge of salvation, Jesus' sacrifice bringing life to us, accept our offering of praise. Lord, you have given us a world of beauty, and we have spoilt it. A world to feed us, and so many go hungry. A world of riches, and we are unwilling to share. A world to care for, and we think only of ourselves. Forgive us, please. Forgive us, gracious God, every time your heart is saddened by our selfish our selfish desires and selfish acts and our selfishness. Every time we have no thought for others, no cares for others, but only ours. Enable us to see this world as a gift from you that can be shared and those who live on it as your neighbors. We ask for this, that your name may be glorified through the beauty of this world and the service of our lives. Faith is a gift by which we see this world through your eyes and the beauty that's within it. Faith is a gift of which we see your image in all people and the blessing if we claim it. Faith is a gift by which we see the hope within your promise and the strength by which to live it. Faith is the gift that keeps on giving and faith is the foundation of us. So Father, we thank you once again for every beauty you've given us and every sin you forgive. In Jesus' almighty name, He also taught us to pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now may I request a Trevor to do our reading. Our first reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 15 to 20. And the second reading is from Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, verses 51 to 58. Trevor, thank you. The first reading is from Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 15 to 20. Act like people with good sense 
and not like fools. These are evil times, so make every minute count. Don't be stupid. Instead, find out what the Lord wants you to do. Don't destroy yourself by getting drunk, but let the Spirit fill your life. When you meet together, sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs as you praise the Lord with all your heart. Always use the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to thank God the Father for everything. Praise be to God for this reading from his word. Amen. The second reading is from John chapter 6 verses 51 to 58. I am that bread from heaven. Everyone who eats it will live for ever. My flesh is the life-giving bread that I give to the people of the world. They started arguing with each other and asked, How can he give us his flesh to eat? Jesus answered, I tell you for certain that you won't live unless you eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man. But if you do eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have eternal life, and I will raise you to life on the last day. My flesh is the true food, and my blood is the true drink. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you are one with me, and I am one with you. The living Father sent me, and I have life because of him. Now everyone who eats my flesh will live because of me. The bread that comes down from heaven isn't like that which your ancestors ate. They died, but whoever eats this bread will live forever. Thanks be to God for this reading from his holy word. Amen. So in my reflection, I'm going to talk about how Jesus offered his body and his blood for us to eat, to have a communion with him, to have a part in him. But there are other people who oppose and said, how can this man offer his flesh to us? They chose death over life. And I sometimes don't understand why. Why we go more deep into this, um, into this um, in communion substance rather than just partake in that life. We choose death over life and that's what happened. Well, let me share a story with you written by Father Tommy Lane and then we can discuss more about it. So one day while walking down the street, a highly successful person, actually an executive, was tragically hit by a bus and she died. St. Peter uh, welcomed him, welcomed her actually at the gate and said, welcome to, uh, to this place where we're going to judge and we're going to give you a choice. You will spend one day in a hell and one day in heaven before you get settled. So after that, whichever you want to, whichever you choose, we will keep you there. You will spend uh, there uh, for eternity. Well, lady said, I will choose heaven. <laughs> but St. Peter said, we do have rules. Unfortunately, we have rules. And one day you have to spend in the hell and another day you have to spend in heaven. St. Peter put the executive in an elevator and it went down and down and down to hell. The door opened and she found herself stepping out onto the, uh, onto the putting green of a beautiful golf course. In the distance was a, a clubhouse and standing in front of her were all her friends, all other executive fellow executives that she had worked with. And they were all dressed in evening gowns and cheering for her. They ran up and kissed her and they talk about their old memories, their old time. They played an excellent round of golf and a night went to the clubhouse where she enjoyed an excellent steak and lobster dinner and good drinks. She met the devil who was actually a really nice guy and she had a 
great time telling jokes and dancing with other people. Good time of laughter and good fellowship. She was having such a good time that before she knew it, it was time to leave. Her 24 hours were over. Everybody shook her hand and waved goodbye as she got in the elevator. The uh, elevator went to up and up and up and opened back at the gate of heaven and she found St. Peter waiting for her. Now it's time to spend a day in heaven, lady, she said. So she spent next 24 hours touring around on clouds and playing the harp and singing. She was happy. She had a great time there as well. But before she knew it was her 24 hours were up and St. Peter's came and get her. So you spend a day in hell and you spend a day in heaven. Now you must choose your eternity, he said. The woman paused for a second and then replied, Well, I never thought I would say this, St. Peter. I mean, heaven has been really great and all, all this stuff. But I think I had a better time in hell. I think I had a better time in hell. So, St. Peter escorted her to the elevator again. And she went down and down and down back to hell. When the door of the elevator opened, she found herself standing in a desolate uh, wasteland covered in garbage and filth. She saw her friends, her fellow executives, were dressed in rags and were picking up the garbage and putting it in the sack. The devil came up to her and put her, his arm around her. I don't understand, she said. I don't understand. Yesterday, I was here and there was a golf course and the clubhouse and we ate lobster and we had dance and had a great time. Now all there is wasteland. Now all there is a wasteland and a garbage and all my friends look miserable. The devil looked at her and smiled. He smiled and said, yesterday we were recruiting you. Today you are a staff. Yesterday we were recruiting you. Today, you are a staff. She is, sin is always attractive, my friends. Sin is always attractive. If it weren't, we won't commit sin, isn't it? What is sinful attracts momentarily and we fall into the trap of believing it will satisfy our needs. We choose death over life. But the following, but the following day, we are still dissatisfied. Why? Because what is sinful never satisfy. What is sinful will never satisfy. The woman in the story was deceived, isn't it? That's the way it is with the devil and with sin. The devil deceive us to make us think that sin is attractive, but we discover afterwards that sin damages and did not bring the joy we wanted. The woman in the story was confused and we in our times, we are confused. We do not seem to know any, uh, anymore that sin is sin and that's what happening with our nation, with our church and individually to us. Sin is inviting us and God is inviting us. We have to choose death or life. Thank you. Let's sing our second hymn once it was the blessing now this is a very very meaningful hymn every word is very important please listen to this in few weeks back i told this as my first thought uh, in my sermon and it's a beautiful words think about it and compare yourself where you were at and now where you should be once it was the blessing a beautiful hymn thank you Once his gift I want 
So over the last year of this pandemic and months, several people have shared with me their concerns, their feelings and their sorrows over the COVID-19 pandemic. People were confused, asking why this happened, why this COVID-19 outbreak? Was it intended by God to test us or is it Satan who is tempting us to give up on God? Well, one thing seems consistent in there, in all those conversations, whether with the um, believers or non-believers, churchgoer or my friends, which seems pretty simple that it is the last day, isn't it? These are the last days we are in, uh, biblically and scientifically as well, I think. For some, these were the last days they search for the materialistic desires of this world and run after it uh, and run after it as they know life is more than more than these materialistic things and for some this was the harsh harsh reality of life and they saw the end of many things in their life and they turn bitter well it does not matter what side you are on whether you become better or worse it is the last day for all of us isn't it the last days for the humanity we all come to the last day the last day of our physical life the last days of our relationship the last days of dream of what life might have been and what we wanted and some days the circumstances of life become so heavy and overwhelming that we declare enough is enough. It cannot go on like this. It is the last day. Have you ever had that feeling? I think we all had this. We tend to think of the last day at some unknown time in the future, however, a day to be avoided. We fear it is a day of future ending, of failures, of future losses. And yet, and yet the reality is that every day is the last day, isn't it? We know we have no guarantee of tomorrow. We do know what tomorrow will bring or if there will even be a tomorrow. This day, the present moment is all we have been given by our mighty and merciful God. So today is the last day, my friends. Today is the last day. And that could be a very harsh reality, but I'm telling you the truth. Today is the last day. But it is not a day to fear or avoid it. Don't take me wrong. It is a glorious day full of grace of God, full of hope, full of beauty and full of life. God guarantee that. No me, not your family, not your money, not your skill, not your government can do that. But God guarantee that in John 6:54, which we just which we have just read. And I will raise them up on the last day. And that's Jesus' promises for us, for you and for me. Every day is the last day. That is not just good news, my friends. That is a great news. Because every day we are being raised up. Every day we are being renewed. Every day we are being recreated. And that's the beauty of God's creation. Every day we are being given new life and new possibilities, new hope. Every single day we are being raised up into the likeness of Christ. Every day you've been given a blank paper to write the blessings of God, the promise of God for you whether or not we are conscious of it that is i believe why we show up on sunday after sunday in the church or in this uh, in this worship we want to be raised up isn't it that is the fulfillment of our deepest longing that raising up is where we find meaning and purpose and in our lives for our lives and that that is something worth celebrating. So today, so today and every day is a day to celebrate and give thanks to our Lord. We do that, how? We do that 
in Holy Communion whenever we partake in it. Whenever we have communion with God, with the elements or without the elements, God changes the bread and wine. The offering of all that we are and all that we have into the body and blood of Christ. Into the body and blood of Christ. We eat and drink. God changes the last day into the new and eternal first day. But how? How can we celebrate and eat and drink together when there is so much divisions? When so much hurt, anger and fear in our churches, in our society, in our family and within ourselves. How can we celebrate when we know the reality of the brokenness, the losses and sorrow of our lives, especially in this time of pandemic, the last days? How can we celebrate when most of the news headlines tells us there is nothing to be celebrated. There is nothing to celebrate. Well, we are not the first to ask this question, my friends. The religious authorities, the religious insiders of Jesus' day also had their questions. They too wanted to know that. There was disagreement and fighting over this discussion. They were arguing among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? How can Jesus claim to be the son of God and offer his own flesh for us to eat and his blood to drink. But Jesus does not answer the question, did he? He does not satisfy our need to be right or fulfill our desire for certainty to know and understand. Jesus ignored the questions and instead respond to our deepest need. What is it? Life. Our deepest need is life. Life is what we most long for today, isn't it? This is our last day. That is what Jesus is offering us. Jesus seems more concerned with life and relationship than with correct answer and right explanations. So relationship is what will change the world and our lives. And Jesus is giving priority to people, to life, and to our relationship. Jesus does not, does not explain how he can give his flesh to be eaten. No. Instead, he invites us to taste and see, to eat and drink. He's like a loving parent setting new food before a child and saying, just try it. It is good for you. I've experienced that. I, when I introduce a new food to Isaiah and Elijah, I just tell them, just try it. It's good for you because I know this food will nourish you. This food will have, when you have this food, you will have communion with us on the dinner table. God, Jesus invites us into a relationship of intimacy with him and each other to come together and partake of the one body and the one blood. Just try it. It's good for you. And that's what Jesus said, taste, taste. The question is not how Jesus could give his flesh to be eaten, where this is what the question, this debate with the authorities. The question is not what Jesus will do or how he will do it. The question is not even for Jesus to answer here. The question is for us actually, what will we do? Will we risk eating his flesh and drinking his blood? He tells us that the one who are eating his flesh and drinking his blood are living and remaining in him and he in them. Isn't it beautiful? He's speaking in present tense, my friend, not past or future. He's talking about now, your and my last day. It's not about the future. It is about right now, here, in this place, in your life and in my life. Are we willing to risk being united, to eat his flesh and drink his blood, to be made one body and one blood with Jesus Christ? If we say yes, we are asking to be changed, to be made different. And God is always faithful, my friends. God will change us 
100%. We will be different, trust me. Our last days will be transformed into the new first day. And that day will be the eternal day. The day in which we are raised up into the likeness of our brother, Jesus Christ. Our last day will be changed into the first day full of new possibilities, full of new relationships and new life, the transformed life. Our pain, our brokenness, our differences will not be healed by doctrines or arguments or schism or certainty. Perhaps elimination of our differences is not even the goal here in Jesus' model. May the goal is to be united, not in spite of our differences, but because of our differences here. Because without each other, we are incomplete. It takes a many along with all of our differences and unites us into one. It heals, it restores, and perfects us. So don't think that you are different from others, because we belong to one God, one flesh, and one blood. When we participate uh, in the communion, we literally take into ourselves, our souls and our bodies the fullness of who Jesus is. We digest His humanity in us. It becomes a part of us, isn't it? We digest the divinity in us. It becomes a part of us. I cannot help but wonder about that old saying which I said it in last Sunday as well. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. Could it be that when we eat and uh, when we eat the body of Christ and drink his blood, that we have Christ in us, it means? Yes. Yes, that was exactly it means that we have Christ in us. And if you have Christ and if I have Christ and if they, whoever they are for you, have Christ, then we are the one body of Christ in the world. We are the one body of Christ in the world. And it means then there is nothing, there is nothing that can separate us from each other or from God. And that's the reality. We become His hand and His feet. We become His mind and His heart. Well, Jesus offered them life and they stood there arguing among themselves about who is right and who is wrong, isn't it? And sometimes that's what we do as well. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And that was the argument. But what I wonder sometimes, as I said earlier, and what I want to know is this, how can we refuse to eat and drink his offering of life? How can we refuse to be raised up? How can we stand there saying, no, thank you, I would rather die. How can we stand there saying, no, thank you, I would rather die. Say in our lecture this week, Jesus doesn't mince words. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, he says, you have no life in, uh, you, have no life in you. I know this word sound harsh, isn't it, and unforgiving. But I wonder if we might hear them as the desperate words of a parent who know exactly what makes for life and what makes for death and long to spare his children the latter. I wonder if Jesus sound the alarm so urgently because he knows, he knows how much and how badly we need this nourishment, life sustaining food he alone can provide. I wonder if he to grieve and weeps and fear and hope when we walk away from his table and refuse his bread, the life-giving bread, and say no to his outstretched hands. I wonder how he sits with us own vulnerability, his own powerlessness and the terrible cost of the freedom he has given us to starve ourselves if we so choose. Whoever eats me will live because of me. That's what Jesus says. He is our bread and our nourishment. It is rock bottom. It is the core of who God is and who we are. May we ever eat and live. May we ever eat and live. God bless you all. 
Let me share this small story again with you. So one of my neighbor's cat was run over by a car. One of someone's neighbor's cat, not mine. One of the neighbor's cat run over by a car and the mother quickly disposed of the remains before her four-year-old son, Billy, found out about it. After a few days, though Billy finally asked about the cat and mother said, Billy, the cat died. The cat died, she explained. But it's all right. He's up in heaven with God. The boy asked, what in the world would God want to do with the dead cat? <laughs> what in the world would God want to do with dead cat? Are we the dead cat for God? I don't think so. Because we will partake in Jesus' communion, in his flesh and in his blood. May God bless you all. Thank you. Let's join our hearts in prayer. And this time, pray for the nations. Pray for your government. Pray for the poor. Pray for the sick. Pray for your family, for your community, and pray for yourself. Let's join our hearts. King of all the earth, creator of the universe, holy triune God, from everlasting to everlasting, you are the Lord. You are worthy of our worship, Lord, and we reverence you in holy fear. You show us the way of insight and offer us the bounty of wisdom. You promise good provisions for those who seek you. Our hearts overflow with melody of gratitude, Lord, and we sing of your goodness in this place, in this congregation, in this community. We give you thanks, Father God, for everything, for every blessing, for every healing, for every family member and our community. You are worthy, Holy God, to receive all our praises and our thanks. We worship you in the glory of your perfect trinity and ask for grace to steadfastly believe and proclaim your unity. We pray for your holy Catholic Church that we may feed on Christ and abide with Him. Grant your Church the discernment and by your Spirit help us to leave our simple ways that we may repent and walk in the way of insight. Father God, we commit our churches, Castells, Castells Junction, Kanwath, and all the nearby churches in thy hand. Give us the courage, give us the strength to share your word and be an example, be an imitator of you in our communities. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life we know. Please give us this bread always. Creator of the earth, you spoke the world into existence and sustain all things by your life-giving word. We thank you for that. Consider the toil and sorrow of the people of the earth and in your compassion, please have mercy on the world. Especially when people are still suffering from this COVID-19. When people are trying to assist when people are still in sorrow and in pain. Have mercy on our world, Lord. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on our beautiful earth. We pray for the poor, Lord, for the persecuted, for the sick, for the hospitalized, and all who suffer physically mentally, financially. We pray for the refugees, for the prisoners, and all who are in danger on some way. Relieve and protect them, O Lord, and grant them eternal hope in you. Teach us how to rightly steward the gift of your creation that the resources of the world could be used to your honor and your glory and for your people. God of all love and peace, we come to you in faith this morning, offering you access into every area of our lives. We look to you, Lord of all, 
mindful of our helplessness. Glorify your name in the midst of our need, Lord. We believe in you. We believe in you, Lord Jesus Christ. We cry out to you, Father God. We receive your witness, Holy Spirit. Abide with us as we abide in you this week and coming weeks and always. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's continue our worship and sing our third hymn. In bread we bring you, Lord. In bread we bring you, Lord. It's a beautiful hymn about the bread and how can we share the bread and how can we be the living bread of God. Let's listen and sing this hymn and worship our God. Thank you. Let's pray for the offering. Pray for your commitment and for your sharing. Anyways, or whatever ways you are sharing with the world. Let's pray. Almighty God who made us who we are, we offer all of ourselves to you. Our money, our talent, our family, our time. Take our talents, our energy and our joy and use us to share your love, Lord. Please take our mistakes, our regrets, and our pain, and use us to bring your healing. Magnify the gifts we offer before you today, Lord, to spread your peace in the world. 
In Jesus' almighty name we pray. Amen. Let's receive the benediction. Receive the blessings. Fill to the brim with the goodness of God, the nourishment of Jesus Christ, the bread of life, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Go now in peace to serve God in all that you think, do, and say. God's peace will always be with you. Amen. 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 Keep right.